bites? No. I owe you a beer. <laughs> I'm always looking for a story. I'm always looking, you know, for that next story to tell with Unfathomed. And one day it just hit me. I, I have a guy right here down the street from me that I know that has a great story to tell that a lot of people are, would be interested to hear. And I'm trying to think of the first time I heard about Rufus. He's been a fixture in this community for a long time and definitely in the angling world. I heard of him, but when he opened up River Palms, which is directly across the street from where I live, you know, I think that's when our relationship, you know, developed more. He was a guide in town. Um, I was getting into the business of guiding, so kind of, you kind of know everybody. And, uh, you know, we just kind of hit it off, started talking more and became friends. And he's, he's one of those guys, he's a great guy. He's one of those guys that he, I just don't think, there's, there's nobody out there that dislikes him. He just has a, a personality that's easy to get along with, and he's, he's friendly, he's joyful, and he's just, just all around good people. This time of the year, Rufus likes to spend a lot of time offshore fishing because we talk. I mean, we, we both like to be out there. It's something different for us. You know, we can always fish the river here. It's a, one of the most diverse estuaries. I always say that, but you have inshore, offshore. But him and I both do that a lot. So we have this desire to do something different. And I think his true love, his true passion is offshore fishing. He told me his, his favorite or the one of the most favorite fish for him to catch is mahi-mahi. And uh, you never know when you go out there. That's the thing. You get out there, you get in this the zone where, where, you know, once you get past 60, 80 feet of water, you have no idea what's gonna eat your line, eat your bait. Um, and the sail fishing has been really good here recently. Unfortunately though, weather doesn't always cooperate. We had just on the backside of Hurricane Dorian, we had a tropical storm, Humberto come through. So the water is extremely churned up, extremely dirty, and really nobody's fished. All the boats were put up on a dry storage, all the big boats, and so none of the charter captains were fishing. Uh, the conditions were really rough, so nobody was getting out. And really, it was, it was, it was somewhat, you know, questionable whether we were gonna be able to get out there with the way the conditions were.
Well, St. Lucie Inlet, the inlet that we fish out of it is notorious as one of the, the tougher inlets, especially when you get big swells, big northeasters in the wintertime. It can, be, it can be tricky, it can break all the way across the inlet. So it's not a, a feat to be taken lightly. You have to respect the, the ocean, you have to respect those swells, and um, you have to be a competent seaman to get out there and do it. We studied it for a little bit, we got to the inlet, we, we, we kind of took our time, looked at it and said, you know, can we do this? We looked at the sets, timed the sets, and then we made a decision that, that we could go. But I tell you what, when you make that decision to go, you have to go and there ain't no turning around. I don't think the camera does it justice on exactly how big it is out there, but there's these giant walls of water that you know, the boat goes down and you lose sight of everything else. And then you know, the swell comes up and everything is in, in view again. And the water has a different color because it's been so turbid and just a different feel in the air. And it, it, it's, it's almost exciting though, to see those size waves and to know that you're out there a part of it. Um, and a lot of times this kind of conditions make for good fishing. So you never know until you go. You can't let this, this ocean condition stop you from fishing. If it's safe, if, if it's passable, you just, you know, you just got to point the nose to the, to the east and go for it. Yeah, there's a the bosk right there. Look at him. Yep. Yeah, here they come. There you go. George is in. Hang on. <laughs> Coming here to the left. Good job. Yeah, I could see him coming down C2. Oh, that was so cool. That was badass. They're over here, Rufus. Okay. Right towards my rod. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Man, they're moving. Too bad they weren't a little black fin. Yeah. But I tell you what, this is fun. You come out here like this, you can. This would be fun on a fly rod. Yes, it would. If there was maybe 15 knots less wind. <laughs> yeah, well, your Zuri twitch bait, man. Did yeah, the they trick. work great. False albacore, they call them up north. It's one of those fish that, again, is an underrated fish. Not really good for food quality, um, but excellent fighting fish. We have actually a tournament here, Bonita Blast Tournament, every summer. That's a huge, you know, huge draw for a lot of people that go out and catch the biggest Bonita. Um, and it's, it's a great fighting fish. It's great for the kids to get out. You know, they're very aggressive on their feeding patterns. A lot of times they'll be striking on the surface. They'll take plugs, they'll take live bait, they'll take fly. So it's a cool fish to target. Gives you something to do, mate. Yeah. Darn circle hooks. You catch everything, <laughs> you catch everything that eats, eats at kingfish, sharks. They just work so well. Look at that swell, Rufus. I know. Yeah, he's a little bigger. Oh yeah. He'd leave a mark. Oh, he would definitely. A little stinger on you. I think we're just gonna cut him off. Yep. Ain't no sense in losing a finger over that. Nope. That hook will rust right out. Yep. Yep. Outstanding. It seems like you get in certain areas. I don't know if it's, it's water temperature, or it's where the bait uh, prevalence is. But you'll get in an area and it'll just be covered with sharks. It could be these little landing sharp noses and you know other species of small sharks. And I'm telling you, sometimes you just have to pick up and just run miles away because you'll just be inundated with shark after shark after shark. And then really that seemed like what was happening to us. We're drifting along, you know, slow trolling along, obviously moving, but we cannot get away from these things.
Rufus is very active with water quality issues, conservation, president of the CCA chapter, very vocal at, at local uh, meetings regarding the water quality. As an angler, but also as a resident of Martin County, he's very affected by the water runoff and he lives right there on the water. He'll even tell you that where he's positioned, his house is positioned, that is where the worst of the cyanobacteria, of the green blue algae, that's exactly where it falls, right there. So he's directly affected, not only from fishing, but as far as you know, a risk to your health, right where he lives. So he, he needs to be involved and he is very involved. Nature, and, and pretty much my whole life, nature and the natural world the animals, the grass, the trees, all that. You know, if it wasn't concrete, I was kind of drawn to it. And uh, so it's sort of been a, a deep rooted part of my life. You know, we're all brothers against, you know, big corporations that want to pollute the environment. And uh, it's, it's if you care about the future, especially if you have kids and you have a family and you, and you want a clean environment for them, then you really get up in arms and you really get anxious and you really get involved. Boom, got him. Come on. Yep. Come on. Can I owe you a beer? What is it? A little snook? Yeah. Yep, it is. A little snook. Yep. <laughs> That's perfect. That's like the, it's just gorgeous. How about this water here? How's it been? It's, you know, they haven't really opened the locks on us with any incredible, you know, volume. So, this is all local runoff right here, right now. Okay. Yes, it's about as ugly as it can be, you know, color-wise and so forth. But, you know, it's, um, as long as they don't open the locks, unfortunately, when the, when the green stuff shows up, it washes against this shore, oh, yeah, all that, yep. a blue-green algae. Yep. What do you think, like, as just an individual? A what? As an individual, like, what one person could do to become, to make a difference, to get involved, whatever, whatever it is, is yep. just becoming a member of one of these organizations. Or? Yep, I mean, you got Captains for Clean Water. That's a start. Join Captains for Clean Water, join the CCA. And, I think uh, Captains has done a great job. Captains too. for Clean Water, guys, my hat is off to those yeah, guys. I sit on a, They have done a great job, guys. Daniel Andrews and Chris, they've done a great job and, uh, you know, I consider them very honorable gentlemen. They've really done a hell of a job. They've sacrificed a lot and they went way out on a limb. And then a couple that, of captains. And, a couple and, of right, a captains. couple of fishing captains. Yeah, captains for clean water. Mahi. Oh, nice yep. Mahi. Yep, here you go. Here. Rufus, Is take he this. on it? Yep. Rufus, take this. Oh, okay. I think he jumped off. Nope, he's on it right there. He's got it. There that's a go. nice fish. Yeah, it's not bad. I saw him coming in. Yeah. Thought it was another shark. I saw the green. I knew it was a mahi. Nice. Yep. You have the world record on fly, don't you? Yes, I do. On tw on 15 pound tippet. How big? 53 and a half. Where'd you catch him at? Isla Mujeres, Mexico in 1990, April 10th, 1990. How many world records do you have? I used to have 10. They've all been beaten except that one. God, this thing is tough. Yeah. Yeah, they get that sideways thing going and they're a bear. There we go. Nice. Bingo. Beautiful. Look at the color. Nice. I love those colors. Yep. That is a beautiful little critter. Missouri makes the best line, leader, and lures in the world. A ton of great products come from this company, but there's a few that I rely on every day. For braid, I rely on the Super Braid. Highly resistant to abrasion, easy to cast, very visible. This is a go-to every day when I'm guiding. This is the working end. I mean, I rely on fluorocarbon every day. I do a lot of snook fishing. It needs to be abrasion resistant and strong knot tying capabilities. And this is the fluorocarbon that I use. Now, as far as hard baits, um, God, it's hard to beat 
top water plugs, especially low light conditions or when searching for fish. There's a couple that I really rely on from Yozuri. The first is the Hydro Pencil. It's a little bigger profile. This comes in a five inch. It's easy to cast, easy to work to get that back and forth walk the dog action. Very effective when searching out uh, predator fish. Something a little bit smaller profile when throwing with a little bit lighter tackle is their new 3D Top Knock Pencil. This comes in a four inch, variety of colors, great for inshore. As soon as this thing hits the water, you can get that walk the dog action. Again, low light conditions, fish in sea walls. Um, I really rely on this when snook fishing, jack fishing, even offshore, you know, you're in a school of, of mahi. Whatever it is, you should always have a top water plug tied onto one of the rods ready to fire out there. Something a little bit different, new from them, is the 3D inshore twitch baits. These are subsurface baits. Really, what I like about these is a lot of times in this area, the fish are feeding on bunker. This looks just like a bunker. So whether you're inshore, offshore, this thing throws a mile. So when you're looking at Yuzuri products, remember that the Super Braid, the Top Knot Leader, and these hard baits are my go-tos on a daily basis. You get out there set up on a fishy zone, you have no idea what's gonna come up. You're trolling live baits. Anything in the ocean will probably eat these baits. Um, but I tell you, that sight that you can see when sometimes when those mahi are coming down sea after your bait, you can see them coming. They'll be lit up, fluorescent colors, just bright, and you see that bait get nervous, and they're so aggressive. And that's the great thing about mahi. And that's probably one of the reasons why Rufus loves them so much, is they're super aggressive um, when they come in on a bait. Yep. Nice! Got him! Good job. There we go. Good That's fish. That's a good fish. Yep. Keep him on now. Yep. Nice fish. Yes, this is a good one. A little bit better. I just kept free spooling it and free spooling it and free spooling it and he picked it up a couple times and finally we got lucky here. They're just so beautiful, you know? God, you can't replicate they're, those colors. It's just, it's incredible. The blue pectoral fins are what just do it for me. That is an iridescence, similar to marlin. Nice little fish. There we go. Excellent. You know, these rods are fantastic. Very nice. Bingo. Nice. Nicely done, team. Spectacular. It's a beautiful fish. Look at that. Lovely little critter. Nice little fella. Nice little bull dolphin. Yeah, be good eating. Well, we know that. That is chicken of the sea right there. Look at that fin, it's just spectacular. These really are, pound for pound, one of my favorite, favorite fish, if not my favorite fish. I just have an, a real soft spot in my heart for big dolphin, I just think they're beautiful. You know, beautiful. Get her on ice. Get her on ice and let's get another one. Anytime I can catch dolphin fish, it's great. The mahi-mahi, which is Hawaiian, it means strong, strong. And uh, it's, it's been one of my favorite fish forever. You know, they're beautiful. You know, what other fish is big, green, blue, purple, yellow, and, and lights up, iridescent, all these beautiful colors. And dolphin are really good eating. And they're always a crowd pleaser.
Rufus mentioned to me about taking the fish to a local favorite restaurant, Talk House, down the street from his house, a place that I've been, you know, numerous times. And you walk in with Rufus and it's, it's like cheers. Everybody knows who Rufus is. So obviously, he frequents this place quite a bit, a lot more than I do. He knows the chef personally. Um, we get escorted to the back. The chef's excited for what I brought him. We brought these fresh mahi fillets. And uh, he says, you know what, just sit back. I'm gonna prepare these. You know, you're gonna be super happy with the way I do this. And I tell you what, it was one of the best meals I've had in a really long time. Fried it, they baked it, um, different toppings. Then they cooked us a steak, a beautiful steak as well. Um, pasta on top of that. So it was just different platter after different platter was coming out. And we just spent, you know, a couple hours there eating and drinking and having a wonderful time. Enjoy. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Dave. How good is that one? Thank you. I like that.